honor torture. It's a pretty, pretty interesting topic. Take you on a little journey here. So, you know, when I looked into this topic, I was like, well, what is torture? And that's the definition that I got. It's the action or practice of inflicting severe pain on someone as a punishment or to force them to do or say something or for the pleasure of the person inflicting the pain. So, you know, I mean, if you're just kind of crazy and you're like, hey, I don't really like that person, I'll torture them. And that's, this is, that's your kind of thing. And this is kind of, that picture is kind of like what you think of when you think of torture. You know, you got, there's an Iron Maiden it looks like, some swords, some stuff to pull teeth with. Um, for the modern ways, Gabe, thanks. Um, this is kind of like what you may expect. I don't know. I mean, going into this, I didn't really know what to expect. I know I thought a few things, you know, there's no way that it's legal. You think of like America, America, like we're pretty clean when it comes to that kind of stuff. And it turns out that that's not so much the case. Um, first, I'll take you through like some past techniques. So this one, this is called the brazen bowl. And what they did with this is they lit a fire under this bronze bowl, and then they'd open up a door and they'd put a person in there, and then they'd just let the person kind of like boil inside. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, you can see that the steam comes out, and that was actually a big, um, like, kind of deter of crime because when the when it would whistle, it's kind of like a teapot. Everybody would be like, "Whoa, somebody's getting killed," you know. So they probably did something bad. Um, but also, if you went against the king or whoever was the ruler, sometimes you got thrown in there, even if you were innocent. Um, but also, there's five there, and I'll be going through those five. They're all pretty interesting. Um, first, we'll start with Republican marriage. This was popular in the French Revolution, and what they would do is they would blindfold um, male and female victims, they'd tie them together, and they'd be naked. Then they'd throw them into the icy rivers, and they just kind of let them float there until they died, either of hypothermia or just froze to death. Um, it was very popular for nuns and priests who went against the French Revolution people at the time, like Napoleon. And This is kind of also the era where the guillotine was used a lot to kill people. That was pretty interesting. They'd put them under it and then, you know, off with their head. The next one is the breaking wheel. This one's really dark. They'd strap a person to the wheel and then they'd spin the wheel and every time they came around, the executioner would hit either a knee or an elbow and once they hit all those joints and they just start breaking bones um, sometimes like a blow of mercy would be hit to the head like with a hammer or whatever and that would just kill them but that didn't happen very often because they wanted them to suffer typically they break all the bones and they leave them on the wheel for the birds to pick at Next is the Spanish donkey. This is used very heavily in the Spanish Inquisition. The victim, as you can see here, placed on a wooden triangle, naked, and weights would be added to their legs, and eventually they'd tear into two, and they'd like, start sliding down, but the executioner, a lot of times, to inflict more pain and cause more like suffering or whatever, would put a certain amount of weight on their legs to get enough where they just start bleeding, but they would prolonged death then. That's, that's gross. Um, this one is saw torture. So you hang your person by the feet up here and then you take two people with a big like tree saw and you just start hacking down the middle. Um, the blood rushes to their head so that they stay alive the whole time. And usually, like you can see in the picture, the saw is only about halfway through. They were cut to about here and then they were just left to suffer. Like, this torture technique is pretty much just for death. I mean, all of them are, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just... Leaves you speechless. Um, through all my research, this is the one that I found was, like, the most brutal. And this was used a lot in England. Um, so it's hang, drawn, and quartered. So as you can see here, this person... First, you're strapped on a board, and you're drugged through the city by some horses, and that hurts and then you're hanged for a while until like you're almost dead but you're not quite dead and then you're drawn which means you're disemboweled and castrated so usually they take like the male genitalia and then they throw in the fire in front of them to like humiliate them and then finally they string you by all four horses like this and then they cut your head off sweet yeah 
Um, now we're going to move to kind of like the more current interrogation methods. As you can see, we got water dousing, stress position, sleep deprivation, waterboarding, and white torture. First one's water dousing. So usually, like in the picture, the prisoner has their hands behind their back and they're shackled, and then water's just thrown on them. Typically, it's cold water. Um, they can be sprayed. Put in, they are put in stress positions also to make it even worse. It's not quite as bad as the old stuff, but this is more for getting like answers out of people. Uh, the next one, like I said before, the stress positions. Um, really, this is just for a comfort thing. Um, they put them in these positions, have to have their hands up, otherwise, you know, they'll get beaten or they'll get privileges revoked. Um, after a long period of time, your muscles start to ache. I mean, if you've ever sat in a weird position for a while, like a movie theater or something, you know how that feels. You know, stuff starts to go to sleep. These, your legs start to go to sleep. Certain people have been in stress positions for over 100 hours at a time, which is a really long time to be sitting like that, especially with your hands tied behind your back. Um, also, like before, this can be used with other methods, like water dousing. Um, sleep deprivation, this is really crazy. So you put in a stress position like that, or you're shackled or handcuffed, and then you can stand. And there was this one prisoner, Arsala Khan, he was kept awake for 56 straight hours, and he hallucinated to like the point of where he almost went crazy. Like, And then the CIA said that they couldn't find any useful information out of him, so they just let him go. Um, but this is mostly used also to get questions, but if the prisoner's not cooperating or whatever, like if they have a hunger strike, they'll just put them in sleep deprivation spots, and then eventually their anxiety and depression can get so severe that they, I mean, they're mentally just broken down. I mean, they're gone, you know. They're almost like a vegetable. Um, waterboarding, this is a pretty, this is a pretty controversial topic, because um, some people say it's alright, and some people say that this is almost as bad as any of the ones that I showed you before. Um, basically what happens is that the prisoners strapped down on a board, you know, their hands are either handcuffed or strapped, and they're covered, their face is covered with a thing of cloth, and then they run water over it. And what this does is that the mouth and sinus fills with water, but it keeps it out of the lungs, so it simulates drowning because you can't breathe. But so the prisoner starts to freak out, but they won't really like drown because once they tip their head up, the water will either come out of their mouth or they'll swallow it. And the problem is with this is that usually, okay, so if you're you know waterboarding somebody, they can't really talk because their mouth's covered, they got water in there. And if you want any questions asked, they can't say anything until it's over. And then once it's over, they might just be like, well, I'm just going to save that information. There's some people that use gasoline. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, white torture, this is, I had no idea what this was when I first found it, but it turns out that it's really crazy. So, what it is, is you're putting a white room like that, that has one, like, cot that's all white, one sheet that's white, one pillow that's white, you're dressed in all white from head to toe, other than, like, your head, like, your face. Um, the guards are all dressed in white, your food is all white, usually white rice and white beans, and when you want to go to the bathroom, you take a little piece of paper and you slip it under the door. Um, after a while, you just the prisoner starts to go insane. Um, you lose your sense of personal identity, and you just you start to go crazy. Um, the U.S. does not use white torture. We use extreme isolation, which means you could be put in a room kind of like this without any windows and only one door, and you don't have any contact with like anybody outside but the guards. Um, Iran uses white torture, but Theirs is, I mean, this theirs is legit. Ours is just extreme isolation. Um, Abraham Nabavi was held in one of the white prison, like one of the white prisons, and he's a quote that says, "Loneliness never leaves you long after you are free. Every door that is closed on you, and this is why it's called white torture. Once you're in that room, you can't escape it, even when you're set free. I mean." you're almost like you're stuck in there, especially if you're in there for a long time. He was only in there, I think, for three or four days, and he still has like nightmares about it because it affected him so much. Um, other methods that are popular, the mob likes to use the cement shoes. I'm sure you guys have heard of that one. 
prison or the victims put in cement and then just thrown off a ship in the deep water. Um, also, the lead sprinkler, that one's pretty crazy. It's a little thing, kind of like um, what at church, like ashes are held in or whatever, where they like, spread them. It's in like a little sprinkler like that. They put molten hot lead or like silver and they let it drip on people. This happened a long time ago, back in the Middle Ages. And they put it in their eyes and whatnot, and then eventually they died of either lead poisoning or just because their body couldn't take it. Um, also, the rat torture. The person is like strapped down without a shirt on, and there's a rat put in a box that has a one source of heat, and rats naturally go away from heat, so the only way that they can get away from it is to burrow through the person. That one was nuts. Um, Kind of going back to the water torture, or the waterboarding, there's a lot of debate about this. I mean, it's been in the news lately because certain people don't agree with what the government does. Um, obviously, torture still exists, but a lot of people think it should be illegal. They believe, you know, it violates basic human rights, that they shouldn't, we shouldn't be strapping people to a board and putting water over their face. We live in a society that's better than that. Um, supporters believe that because of what the prisoners do, like, they kind of deserve it. I mean, there's certain groups that cut people's heads off and people don't want them to be waterboarded, which, that's a whole other debate. But, some people think that it's only used as a, like, a revenge tool for the United States. So a lot of the 9-11 terrorists were taken to Guantanamo Bay and put through extreme, like, sleep deprivation, stress positions, waterboarding. And that was to extract information, but a lot of people don't believe that. They just think that they were put there to get, like, tortured for what they did to our country. Um, ultimately, though, it is up to you to decide. So you should put yourself in each side's, sh each side's shoes and then decide how you feel about that, about torture. Did you see what they do in Brazil? The torture they do? No. They put the people like they put the person inside a rack of like wheels, like car wheels, mm -hmm. and they put them on fire. Really? They, they drop the gasoline, yeah. Like they strap you up in like tires, yeah, mm -hmm. tires, all the way to your shoulder. They bathe you in gasoline and then they light you up. That's crazy. Do you guys have any questions at all? Yeah, I saw it happen a couple times. You saw it happen a couple times, you said? Yeah, you Driving down the street, there's someone burning in the car. What? It depends on where you are, actually. Why? Do, who does it? Like the government, the police? Cartels. Oh, well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It's actually pretty common. <laughs> Jesus. So should I stop? Jeez. Yeah, I think so. Do you guys don't have any questions, dude? Mm -hmm. All right.